Welcome to the RV Podcast 397. And this week, we asked the question, will campgrounds be less crowded this summer because more people are canceling trips? Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Wendland, and this is my lifelong traveling companion and my bride, Jennifer. Well, we are in the busy travel season. Memorial Day weekend is, is upon us. Uh, and so far, indications are that there are some people um, staying home because it costs too much for uh, travel. But uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that in the next segment and what that might mean to the camping situation and the overcrowding that we've expected. But um, this is going to be a busy season. We are going to be hitting the road pretty quick. Uh, we have a trip to the Upper Peninsula of Michigan scheduled next week. Mm -hmm. We've got another trip down to Tennessee where we have been working on some property that we're developing into a private little RV retreat of our own. We've got our fingers crossed to get our electricity in within the next few weeks. And in the south in Tennessee, electricity is needed in June. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, for that air conditioner. I think, uh, I wonder if it'll be the same price as, as it is in Michigan. I don't know. We'll, we'll find, find out. Yeah. Most important is, uh, I wonder if we'll get it in uh, in time for our next visit, because uh, we do have solar on our new fifth wheel, and we do have, uh, you know, uh, lithium batteries, but air conditioning takes a lot out. Uh, and we're talking about, later on this summer, maybe even upping our solar and lithium capabilities on the fifth wheel. So... We have a lot to, to do this uh, this summer. We hope that you are too, and despite all the craziness out there, uh, that you are able to get out and do a little bit of RVing. One of the things we wanted to talk a little bit about is uh, in, in response to a couple of questions we had, uh, Mike, you and Jennifer talked about getting something called the EFS card. Uh, what is that? It saves you money for gas? Uh, no, it saves you money for diesel. And uh, this is what it looks like. I got mine and uh, it's, uh, it's a pretty cool little card. It's like a little credit card, except it's really not. It's tied into your bank. To get this card, you got to give them your bank routing number and uh, your um, account number. And you have to apply and it uh, then comes to you. And then at select uh, diesel stations around the country, you can get a significant discount, as much as um, 40, 30 to 40% off the price of a gallon of diesel. Again, it's not available for RVs, or for um, gasoline engines. It's only available for diesel engines. And um, if you're towing something with the diesel, or if you're in a diesel pusher uh, class A or a C, or even a, a diesel B, yes, you can use it. You do pull up to the truck pumps, not the auto pumps. And uh, it's, it's, it's uh, a little bit, you got to enter in some codes and you do an app called Open Roads, but it's called the EFS card. And the app that you can get, you can download that right now, is called the Open Roads app. And it's available for both the iPhone and uh, for Android devices. Now, doesn't the fuel come out faster when you go to where the trucks yeah. get gas? Yeah, the diesel does because it's a big hose. And another benefit of that, <laughs> who'd think this is a benefit, but it won't cut off at $100 at the pump like it does at the gasoline pumps in many places because, you know, those diesel trucks that use those commercial pumps uh, have massive pumps and, and uh, so they're already set for you know, the $100 plus or many hundred dollars in their case. But uh, yes, the fuel does come out quicker and uh, you can't get the uh, the discount if you go to the auto pumps. And it's not at every station. Uh, there's a list on the Open Roads app that explains what station, but like uh, TA, uh, those big truck stops, Pilot, Flying J, they, they're available, uh, and a bunch of others that, uh, that you encounter. And you get the app and you can see on a map where they all are, so. Uh, yes, you can save thirty to forty percent, or thirty to forty cents off a gallon of diesel, and that's a good so thing. So, what does it do? Does it draw money directly out of your bank account? Yes, and I should point out that you may get that discount. The people who give you the card and the app, 
they take, uh, I, let's see if it says here on their list, that they take uh, 10% of the savings. So if you save, say, $25, they take $250 as their fee. And there is a transaction fee at the pump that uh, might uh, cost you even more. So that 30 to 40% in savings is probably realistically maybe 20%, maybe 30%. But, you know, it's better than 1% or 2% that you can get through some of these other cards. Is it worth the hassle for you? You're the one that will have to make up your mind that way. We got the card, and uh, we've yet to use it, and uh, I'll uh, I'll use it on a couple of our long-distance trips. Was there a fee for getting the card? No, it's free to get the card. It's free to get the app. But uh, once you – and then it just – they just uh, – and you can – you know, the card keeps track of what you spent. Uh, uh, but, you know, you, I'll let you know how it really works out with all the transaction fees and stuff. But we heard about it from some of our, our viewers – and we talked about it, and now many of you have asked us, and I hope that helps explain a little bit about it. I just seem to have memory banks of you not being real happy with that gas coming out so fast. Are we going to get used to this, or uh, I, out of where the trucks <laughs> get gas? Only, uh, you know, it depends on what, they're kind of dirty, you know, those commercial pumps. Uh, there's always been diesel spills, and you're kind of walking in diesel, and I don't like going to those commercial pumps to get gas, but if I can save, you know, 20 to 30 cents a gallon at, when all is said and done, I guess I'll just have to step carefully and maybe use those diesel mitts. But And uh, the truckers are going to say, oh no, another RVer who doesn't know quite <laughs> what they're doing, <laughs> that like two trucks could fill up in the time that one little RV figures it all out. These are tough, tough situations, right? So we'll we'll figure that all out. Uh, one of the things that we wanted to, to uh, do in our podcast is sort of uh, pass on some of the getting acquainted emails that we hear from people. Uh, when, we, when people join our, uh, our group or they sign up for our newsletter, we always send some correspondence back and forth. Say, Tell us a little bit about yourself. Help us understand how you've come to the RV lifestyle, what's your, what excites you about it, and those stories are really great. They really help us as we read every one of those, understand what it's like for so many of us out there. And I thought it would be good to have getting acquainted uh, messages to share with you here in the podcast. So we've got one we want to start with this week. Our first one is from Danette. And she says, Tony and I have been together for 18 years, married 16. We have talked about living in an RV from almost day one. Back then, it was talked about when we retire. Now, it's a reality because we can work remotely. We have three rescue dogs that travel with us everywhere. A little bit about what drives us to do what we do. I am a cancer survivor, battled it twice, was told in 2011 that I had six months to two years to live. From that time on, we do what we want. When we want and live like there is no tomorrow. Of course, money has slowed us down some. Last July, we had a scare with me, and we have uh, taken it as a kick in the butt to get moving. So we purchased a camper in December and took it to Alabama on our first adventure, the first part of February. My work has slowed us down some, but that is changing soon. Our home base is Milwaukee. This has been a learning process with each trip, though none of the learning process has made us feel anything but more excited about making this a full-time lifestyle. My husband doesn't know a stranger, and I'm a little more reserved. We both love meeting new people and hearing their stories. Thank you for allowing us to be a part of your amazing group. Wow. Well, thank you, Danette, and um, wow, that's that's, I think, a great uh, story of persevering, making the best out of every minute that we have. And, you know, we've heard that so much lately from people that we don't know how much time any of us have and make the best uh, of what we can. And mm -hmm. it sounds like Danette and her husband, Tony, are doing just that. We hope we meet them up on the road sometime. All right, we come back. We want to talk uh, some more about uh, this summer's travel crowded campgrounds, and how it's starting to shake up. Uh, stay with us. We'll be right back. Tired of overcrowded campgrounds and competing for reservations? 
paying high fees for sites, Well, ownership is an emerging trend in RVing that might be right for you. On June 25th, there is a big lakefront sales event at the Landings in Tennessee. Jennifer and I visited the Landings just west of Nashville. They offer incredible lakefront RV properties up to 70 times the size of typical RV lots with frontage on the biggest lake in Tennessee. We loved it. The scenery is breathtaking, and you own it outright, not a timeshare. Your property, your way. You can have your own private dock. You can landscape, garden. They're pet-friendly. It's gated and secure with high-speed internet. There's even free RV and boat storage. It's a wonderful place to make your home base. No more calling around for reservations and ready whenever you want. Dockable lakefronts start at only $59,900. Financing and big discounts are available on multi-lot packages. For information, visit rvlakefrontland.com. That's rvlakefrontland.com. When we're asked what's the most important modification we made to our RV, it's an easy answer. Battleborne batteries. Battleborne batteries are quality, safe, reliable lithium batteries that allow us to stay out there off the grid longer. Lithium batteries charge faster, they charge fuller, they're longer lasting, they're maintenance free. And battleborne batteries are protected by a 10 year guarantee. Now, in our case, they just dropped into the existing AGM batteries that we have. And it'll probably be the same on your rig too. Battleborne battery experts can get those in your rig just like they did with ours. They can also match you up with the right cabling, the inverter, the charger, the solar controller, everything. Jennifer and I swear by our Battleborne batteries. They allow us to boondock off the grid. Check them out. Go to rvlifestyle.com slash lithium. rvlifestyle.com slash lithium. Welcome back, everybody. Time now for the topic of the week. And the topic this week is... Should we expect cancellations at campgrounds? Should campgrounds be less crowded because people are traveling less this summer? That is a question that we have been flooded with uh, when we started talking about, you know, what this high fuel rates mean to everybody. And um, we want to just talk about that a little bit. But first, uh, a couple of indications. Uh, First of all, the national average for a gallon of gasoline has not fallen for more than a month. It has either remained flat or it has risen every single day since April 24th. It has set a new record every day since May 10th. So it is doing nothing but going up. And as we said in our newsletter this week, the only thing you can say is that gas is cheaper today than it probably will be tomorrow. It just keeps going out. you know, it, it's, it doesn't do us much to say that it's pushing now $5 a gallon, close to $5 a gallon for regular gas, close to $6 a gallon for diesel. And the predictions are it is going to go much higher. Now, the question is, um, if people are canceling their travels, and we, we're hearing from many, and we'll share some in a minute, uh, they are, they seem to be canceling or certainly modifying their travels. Uh, will that mean that there'll be more openings in a campground? That's the question. I'm not so sure, and I'll tell you why I'm not so sure. Uh, how many? I think we've almost doubled the number of RVers and campers over the last couple of years, mm-hmm. or at least it certainly seems that way. Uh, if all of them stopped coming, all those newbies that came from COVID stopped camping, we would still be very crowded because we still remember, had a lot of folks out there. I mean, remember what it was like even before COVID? It was very hard to get into a campground. Mm-hmm. Not that many new campgrounds have opened. Um, there are still places to boondock, but here's a statistic that just came to us from uh, The Dirt, which is uh, an app that helps you find places to camp. Uh, they did a study... Uh, on dispersed camping, boondocking, and it has doubled between mm. 2020 and 21 because of campground overcoming. People that couldn't get a reservation at a campground turned to dispersed camping, off the grid, unplugged, and um, it's uh, it's popular on public land, 
but fewer and fewer public lands are, are opening to dispersed camping. Uh, almost every couple of weeks we hear of, a, of an area that's closed because of abuse. People have overcrowded it or they have left it trashed. Um, so I don't think that's going to be able to pick up any of the slack. And I think that, that there are still enough people who are going to be out there camping that we may not see less uh, room in our camp, or you know, more room in our campgrounds this summer. But we do know that people are traveling less. Uh, a Detroit TV station just did a survey about Memorial Day camping, and 45.4% uh, of their viewers said that they were canceling Memorial Day weekend trips altogether because of the gas prices, 45.4%. And that was on May 19th when they did the survey. So a couple of weeks have passed. That may be and probably is even higher now if that's true. So it's reasonable to assume that many RVers planning long distance trips are now in the process of changing those plans um, and many seem to be turning to shorter trips. So we want to read you responses that we've gotten since we started really talking about this over the last couple of weeks. Uh, so we can all hopefully get a rough idea, a crystal ball, an early warning system of what we can expect out there now that Memorial Day and summer officially has begun. Okay, our first one is from Dave. We made reservations back in January for camping in June and July. It was going to be a two-month trip. I have canceled them all. My fuel prices are double what they were last year. If it was just that, maybe we would have continued. But everything else is way up. Groceries, restaurants, clothing, medicine, museum admission, you name it. And isn't that the truth? This is such a cumulative kick in the pants. Uh, our, our wallets are stretched because everything else is in short supply or extremely expensive. Now from Marco, we are definitely seeing fewer RVs on the road. That is the first indication, I think, of what will be a lot of campground cancellations. We just uh, have been at a campground for the last three weeks now, mm -hmm. and it has filled up every single weekend. Mm -hmm. um, in, during the middle of the week, there's been lots of room, lots of places, but from Thursday through Sunday noon, it, they've, it's been filled. And the kids are still in school in Michigan. Yes, so I think that that's, that's part of, uh, of why we're seeing um, those empty spots during the week. We're going to learn so much more after Memorial Day. Now from Larry. I'd say the number of campers has doubled over the past couple of years. Even if they all stay home, and I think many will, that means there are still a lot of the normal pre-COVID campers out there it's still going to be hard to get a spot. Yeah, that's what we were just saying earlier. Yeah. I, I agree with Larry. Yeah. And now we have Russell. I was uh, given two oh nine a gallon for diesel. Now it is five twenty nine at the cheapest place. That's almost two and a half times the cost. So the trip that cost me one thousand two hundred dollars is now going to cost me three thousand. Can you imagine that? $3,000 in fuel costs? Wow. Yeah, he's in a big, uh, I bet he's in a big Class A. Sounds like it. Well, we've oh. got plenty more here. Um, this is from Vince. And Vince says, we are in Kentucky on our way to Wisconsin for the summer. I think storage in Wisconsin will end up saving us hundreds of, mo of dollars. So <laughs> they're not driving. Mindful Kayaker uh, posted it on uh, our YouTube uh, group. I retired and bought a small RV to make my dream road trip around North America, but I will have to postpone this dream up to 2024 to see if things change in this country. But you know, a lot of people don't have until 2024, right? Right. And that's what's, what's really scary. Uh, then we have uh, from R. Stir Fry. <laughs> <laughs> that, those YouTube names. Um, We've canceled three of our five trips this year because of the fuel prices. First summer of retirement, and it's not the way we pictured it. We'll have to adjust and move on. Scary, scary thoughts. You have, we've got a couple more that we oh, want to share. This one? It's, it's, uh, this is from John. 
Regarding your feedback request on fuel prices, my wife and I are not letting the high price deter us from making another summer trip to Alaska and the West Coast. BB and PA in September. We are currently in... Oh, what he means, BB to PA. Pennsylvania. Yeah, obviously uh, Pennsylvania. I Canada, don't know what BB someplace is. in Canada to Pennsylvania in September. We are currently in Prince George. British Columbia, yeah. Where we uh, paid a 219 Canadian price for a liter of uh, diesel. Sure are glad we got the four-cylinder diesel in our 2014 RT Agile when they offered it, averaging 23 miles a gallon on this trip. We currently have 96,000 miles on our trusted tin tent. That's what I used to call ours, too, a tin tent. Our financial guy says if you want something in retirement, to do it, because if you save the money and pass it on to your kids, they'll just buy a Porsche with it. <laughs> Well, maybe, <laughs> maybe. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, he's delighted that he's getting that good mileage, and uh, and that's uh, that's a lot of traveling. Uh, one last one, and uh, this is from Jacqueline, and she says, "Hey, Mike and Jen, we love your podcast." Uh, regarding gas prices, we're cutting back on travel in our diesel pusher, not because we can't afford it, but more because I don't want to fill the pockets of those responsible for this absurdity. We're in our mid-70s, and we own an RV lot at a nice resort in Okeechobee, Florida. We're not full-timers. We also have a Sticks and Bricks home in Sarasota in the Bradenton, Florida area. So we go back and forth, and we consider going to Okeechobee to be more of a getaway. We bought a motor home to travel, but since gas prices have skyrocketed, we're thinking we like the idea of owning more than one place to get away to and not contributing to the insanity that the economy has created. We love your podcast. We love your land on the Tennessee lot that you're talking about, and we've considered buying there as well. But as we get older, we love the warm weather in Florida, and we don't mind staying here throughout the year. <laughs> We're searching for another lot here in Florida, and would love to find a place in the central part around a small lake. This is from Jacqueline and her husband, Eric. So what are we to make of all of this stuff? What's your thoughts? Is it going to be less crowded at campgrounds this summer? I think it's going to be crowded because if there's a spot, somebody's going to take it. So uh, you have to book ahead of time. You have to be creative. you got to plan. You can still get out there. Yeah, and uh, what we are hearing is that many people are going closer to home. Yeah. And in fact, out at this park that we've been at uh, here in Michigan, not too far from our Six and Bricks house, most of the people there, their license plates were from areas right around the metropolitan Detroit area, which is relatively close to the campground we were in. And, uh, you know, really, when you're at the campground, it's just, you, you've gotten away. It, you know, so I think people are going to be exploring their own state parks and their own county parks and uh, wherever they can find dispersed camping. They just aren't going to be taking those long cross-country trips like they used to do every year that's that's my thought um when this if it really hits ten dollar a gallon diesel and eight dollars a gallon for gasoline as some predict by midsummer i think then you'll see um, more empty spots in campgrounds but it's still going to require reservations if you want to be sure this is a really interesting time for so many of us who've heard our parents, perhaps, growing up, talk about what it was like. We're going to be faced with some of those same decisions in a different time, in a different culture, with different technology. But um, this is the first time that, for many of us, that we've really seen uh, all elements of the economy come crashing down like this. So. Um, it, I think the element I feel the most for are those marginal RVers, those who are living on a fixed income that could kind of get by in their RV before all of this started. They're the ones that we're going to see pu pushed out of it more than uh, perhaps the old traditional, the, you know, the traditional retirees who, who had more resources to draw on. They'll be le obviously least affected by this. But there will be a significant fallout among some segments of the RV community. I think that the national parks are going to be just as crowded as ever 
because people will make that their main destination to go there. Mm -hmm. I I don't think they're going to give up everything. It's going to be like one big push, one dream that they want to get there. And so uh, timing to get in and managing spaces at those parks will become perhaps a little more stressful. Yeah. Uh, Interesting times. Well, that's your feedback. We always love hearing what you have to think and what you have to say, and you help us make our plans. What about us? Um, we're continuing on. Um, we're, as I said, going to the Upper Peninsula next week. We just, are, as we're putting this podcast together, making plans to get down to Tennessee. Uh, then we're going to get back to Michigan, and then we're going to be going back down to a different part of the South. Kentucky. Kentucky. So, um, uh, and that'll get us through uh, the end of June. And then we'll probably reassess. We've got, we still kind of hope to get out west sometime this year, but we're going to reassess and look at everything month by month. And I bet we're not alone. Bet many of you are doing that too. Crazy idea that just popped in my head. I Uh-oh. wonder. <laughs> you it's always know scary when about. she says it just popped into my head and then she's going to talk about it. <laughs> I wonder how many people have space on a farm or on their property to put in a spot or two maybe just electricity, I, I don't know, water, and uh, more people open it up and let people camp at their farm or their yard, more like Harvest Toast and uh, well, Boondockers Dr- Welcome. Well, we're seeing... I wonder if more people are going to do that and charge a little fee. We're going to open up our spot uh, in in uh, Tennessee to uh, Boondockers Welcome, and uh, that that has three spots on it, and I think other people will probably be doing the same thing. Mooch docking is going to be a big deal where you can stay in somebody's driveway. And, you know, mooch docking, you know, perhaps you have in-laws that you love, but you'd prefer them not under your roof. You know, if you made a nice spot out there where they can plug in. Yeah, yeah. Easier on everybody. Well, we love hearing from you. (laughs) What are your thoughts? What are your plans? Let us know. And uh, we'll uh, keep looking at this situation. But meantime, we're doing the be- we're all going to do the best we can. Uh, I think uh, in the RV lifestyle, and let's hope that this really does end uh, in, in the uh, foreseeable future. It's going to be a challenging summer. There's no doubt about that. Hey, when we come back, we've got your questions of the week. So stay with us. When we're on a road trip, we always seem to find a way to stop at a camping world center. There are over 225 Camping World locations across the country, and there's always one close by when we need parts and accessories for our RV or just want to shop. In fact, uh, we have so much fun with uh, Camping World, and as we talk about it as one of our sponsors, they have agreed to offer a 10% discount if you use the coupon code RVLIFESTYLE10 when you buy $99 or more in merchandise. You'll find everything you want from outdoor furniture and appliances, the ones you see us use in our videos and we talk about here in the podcast. RV extras that include everything from camping chairs to fire pits, electrical accessories, must-have gadgets. Check them all out. And again, don't forget, use the coupon code RVLIFESTYLE10 when you visit CampingWorld.com. All right, welcome back. Time now for the questions of the week. And again, you can send us your questions, your comments. Just send it to send them to us via email at Mike and Jen at RVLifestyle.com. Um, I uh, got some a response to uh, one of the questions we had last week. And uh, this is from uh, a, a listener named uh, Jim who says, Mike and Jen, you read an email from Tony, I believe, uh, regarding using the second receiver on the rear of his fifth wheel to haul e-bikes. As you indicated, it appears to be overweight, uh, his e-bikes and, the, and the, the hitch that he was going to use. Tony did not list his tow vehicle, so I can't point out a particular product. So in general, I will mention that the two-inch front mount receivers are available, easy to mount, and have enough rating to carry two e-bikes and the bike rack. Uh, I carried a Yamaha generator from Ohio to California and back on the front rack with no issues. Uh, Keep track of it when uh, backing and turning, he (laughs) says. Uh, I would not hesitate to outfit my current Class C with a front mount hitch as well. And uh, I did mention, did not mention that, and that is an option that uh, you see it a lot. A lot of people don't like the idea of having uh, e-bikes or something hanging off the the the, back? the, the front of their oh, the front. tow vehicle. But um, that is an option where you could get one that would handle the weight of the e-bikes 
on a front hitch on your tow vehicle or if it's a small motorhome on the motorhome as well. So uh, thanks uh, to Jim for passing along that comment. You put them on the back, to me, they're going to fall off, and you're not going to know they fell off. Well, you'll know they fall off if they you'll fall off the front. You'll know they fall off the yeah. front. Yeah. All yeah. right, now we have a question from Cindy. I am exploring Starlink. Is, it is not available in my area, Colorado Springs. My question is, can you sign up, and while waiting for availability, can you get potable so that you can use it with your RV, and then, when available, set it up at home? Or are we just out of luck until we have availability? I have an address in Utah that does have availability. Can I use that and use the potability in my RV and then when available in Colorado Springs, switch the address to my home? Can they ship to a different address? Um, yes, yes. Um, that's how many people are getting Starlink. For example, uh, what you do is you go on the Starlink uh, website and you search to see what areas it's available in. Many areas are oversubscribed. What they've done is they've limited the number of subscribers in certain areas as they are building out the system because they're launching new satellites every single month. Uh, 60 of them just went up the other day. And uh, as uh, you know, the service gets stronger and that constellation they're building gets bigger, They'll open up more spaces in those areas that are oversubscribed and more people can get in. But here's the catch. You, you can find another address. There have been people who found a UPS store in a distant city, for example, that did have openings for Starlinks, and they've ordered it and had it shipped there and gone and picked it up. And then in, 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 and then you, you need to enable it at that home location that it's registered to. So you can go out and do that right in the parking lot if you want. And then, um, and then you can t then you can go back to the app and click on the portable uh, feature that for twenty five dollars extra a month allows you to use Starlink anywhere you go, and so then you can go back home and do that, and that's what many people are doing. Um, can you use it at home? Sure. Can you use it on the road? Yes. If you have that portability feature for twenty five dollars a month enabled, you can. So Starlink is very usable that way. And just because your home home <laughs> is uh, oversubscribed doesn't mean that you can't find another location where you can get it and have it registered as your home and go and enable it there. You can change your permanent address uh, when space is available on the network if, if that's needed. Uh, but um, you can use it right now. Many, many people are. Uh, I'm in a couple of, of Starlink groups on Facebook, and it's just fun to watch how empowering this is to so many people to be able to have that kind of access. I read a story uh, just today of somebody uh, in a small town in uh, Canada that just got hit by a big storm. It knocked out all the power, all the electricity for several days. And so uh, using a generator uh, to power up the router, they went to the local fire station and set up Starlink, and they used that to handle all of the communications for the town uh, until the power was restored. And uh, that's a, that's just a great thing. And they said the fire chief said he's getting a Starlink system <laughs> for the fire station. And uh, so first responders are going to are using it. Um, I do say that it is uh, as you do the the when you're doing the remote portable operation, uh, they give priority to people who are registered users in that district, in their home district. So if you're using it as portable, you kind of will still get service, but it might not be on quite the level that the person who lives in that area who got it before it was closed, you know, before the, the network was closed to new, new subscribers. I hope that makes sense to you. Uh, but you can use it. And uh, uh, the speeds are phenomenal in terms of download street speeds. Upload speeds I have found to be disappointing in uh, most of my I travel so far. Uh, spotty uses into being able to go online. My home area for my satellite is our condo in Florida. And uh, in our first test there, I had great uh, upload, uh, like 15, 20 uh, mega MPPS. Uh, 
but in my last test out here at the campground, uh, it was unusable. I couldn't get enough speed to really do a good uh, live stream with it. My download speeds were fantastic. So long story short, yes, you can use Starlight. Are we Starlight. teaching people how to be deviant here? No, no. It's, the is system little... is okay that way. Okay. They used to be. They're going to really... pay more money and they're not going to get quite the service. Yeah. It's not throttled, but it's, you know, it's, it's, it's prioritized for people who are operating out of their home area. Uh, As well, you know, seems fair because yeah, there was a limit. I think it's fair. Uh, and again, it's being developed now and it's, it's very, very usable, but... Uh, it's not the, you know, it's, it's not what it's going to be. How, how's that to say? It's going to get even better. And uh, we are really, uh, really enjoying having it. And uh, I can't wait. One of the reasons I can't wait to go back down to Tennessee is now that I have a system that can get it up a little higher with a telescoping pole, I think we'll be able to use it well in Tennessee, even though we have good cellular in Tennessee. So, but uh, I do like the Starlink download speeds. We're going to stream our movies at night, and uh, nobody's hassling us, so it's good. <laughs> All right, you have a question, you have a comment, use our email. Just send it to a, a Mike and Jen at rvlifestyle.com. That's it for this episode of the podcast. Uh, we'll see you on YouTube, we'll see you on social media, and, of course, new content every day at uh, rvlifestyle.com. Thank you guys for watching. Happy trails.